right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, happy Monday, late morning, early afternoon. Uh, today, we're going to start with our exercise 208. And 208 is kind of a, it's a nice break point for us because you're going to go from having a complete set of instructions like we have in the last two modeling and building components where I'm like, do this, then do this, then do this, to where you actually have to start to develop your own strategy for how you're going to uh, make a particular thing. And so today we're going to make a window or a door. We'll use that as a building component potentially later on. And in the process of doing that, you're going to figure out what's the right set of tools that are going to get you to a complete built object. And so we'll work with some plans and sections. We'll pull some AutoCAD information into Rhino. We'll work with that. But at some point, you have to kind of start to learn how to model on your own. Next class on Wednesday, we'll start to deal with some organic shaped objects. So pillows and those kinds of things. So we're moving in that direction, which is something that everybody always wants to learn. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to work from uh, an AutoCAD uh, example today. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And you guys are going to give me just a second to get organized. Perfect. Perfect. And so I have exercise 208 up here on the screen. And we're going to start in part one, and that is selecting and building uh, a component. And so doors and windows tend to be the easiest ones to do. Uh, I'd rather have something that's, that's integral to a building rather than an object. So like not a vase or a you know, toilet or something like that. Let's look at something like a window or a door or a cabinet or something along those lines. And one of the ways that we can find these kinds of objects is we can actually go to a manufacturer's website and look at what documentation they have. So if I went to, say, uh, Anderson Windows, uh, Anderson Windows, right, and this is just a, um, I picked a win window manufacturer. Usually on any one of these websites, they'll have a for pros section or for architects or for designers or something like that. Uh, and so we want to get into there and then guess what? Here's under tools and documents, here's an architectural files CAD. That's something that we're after. Now, if it was a different window manufacturer, I don't know, let's try Pella. Okay, they probably have, oh, here's a professional. So let's go to the professional section. Here we go. Uh, and let's see, four pros. And we probably have, let's try product downloads. And I'm betting that they have, yep, here's some documentation depending on the window. So, um, you know, as you, as you play around with this, you can try different manufacturers. Uh, La Cantina. doors. Uh, um, these are really, really cool doors. Um, you know, the, they're, they're called big doors. Um, and so you can, you can get a whole variety of these, these giant open doors and whatever. Uh, they have similar stuff to set up so you can get information from their websites. Anyway, I don't really care which one you work with, but I think the Anderson one is, is particularly easy to find. Um, but they have a whole series of windows that we can pick from. So a casement, it means a window that cranks out. Uh, an awning is one that has the hinges on the top and, and cranks out from the bottom. Uh, gliding windows are windows that pass by one another. Double and single hung are where you lift up the window um, or, and or pull the top window down. Um, bay windows are ones that pop out. Um, they have doors, they have in-swing doors, out-swing doors, uh, commercial doors, gliding doors. Those are like sliding glass doors. Anyway, we're going to pick, I'm just going to go with a, a, a plain casement window. And if you want more information on this, you can actually open and see more information about it. So it'll tell you materials, it'll tell you what it looks like, you can see pictures, etc. So for our purposes, though, that's fine. If we come over here, we don't need the 3D view. We're going to go to our 2D elevation view. Notice that there's several different options to download. We're going to download the DWG file. 
And so I'll click on that. It comes down as a um, zip file. And let's go ahead and show that in its folder. There it is. We need to extract it in order to use it. So I'll right click on it and say extract all. And it gives us the awning windows and the casement windows. We're going to work with the casement windows. So before we, I could open it in AutoCAD, but I don't need to. I'm going to go ahead and open up Rhino. I'll give Rhino a second to open here. Perfect. We need to get organized. So let's close up all these V-Ray toolbars. I'm going to dock the V-Ray all toolbar at the top of the page here. Perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to File and then New and make sure that I'm choosing a large object inches template right there. I'll go ahead and say Open. Now it's important because the manufacturers work in inches, we need to use the large object inches template, unless you were getting a European, for example, a European manufacturer. Uh, if it's an American manufacturer, they're going to be in inches. And then we can go to File and then Import. That's different than Insert or Insert Block Reference. We're going to File and then Import. And so from here, we need to go find the AutoCAD file that we downloaded. So it's in my Downloads folder, and there's my casement window. And I'll go ahead and open it. Gives us some import options. All of these options are just fine. We'll go ahead and say OK. And then we can take a look at what came in. So if we zoom out here, they have a bunch of these different windows. And actually, it's probably even easier to look at it if we were looking at it in the top view for right now. There we go. So they have different sizes of windows. Looks like they have some arc tops on this particular set. Uh, there's a different set. The reference to colonial or prairie has to do with the uh, style of mullions on the windows. They're just different styles. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to pick one of these windows. So obviously, you would have some, some idea of, oh, I want a particular size window, and you'd be going after that one particular size window. So let's say that I like this one, which is a 3050 window. If I like this one, I'll go ahead and select the whole thing if I can. Like that. And then I'm going to copy it. So I'll go to Transform, and then Copy, or I'll type Copy into my command line. Let me turn on my end snap. We'll snap to that corner right there. And I'm going to put it at 0, 0, 0, enter. It's right down there at the origin. And then I can actually get rid of all the rest of this. I don't need it. It was just reference file. Um, I'll press the delete key on my keyboard or type delete. And then we can zoom in on this one object that's left. This is the object that I'm going to actually build. So let's zoom selected. And there it is. So right now, this is, let's look at it in perspective here. Oops, I don't have it selected, so I can't zoom selected. Let's select it. Zoom selected, and there it is. So right now, this is merely just a bunch of lines. And so I have to start to think about what is this going to look like in three dimensions? How am I going to build it? So if you're, if you're really getting technical, you could come back here and you could look at the 2D detail file. We could download this. Let's go ahead and open it. Uh, oops, sorry, I have to extract it. So let's go to downloads. Uh, I think it's this one, extract all. Okay, and then I could bring in one of these detail files, right? These are different joins, et cetera. Uh, let's take a look at that first one. Go to File and then Import. Let's look at this first one here. 
say okay. And this is giving us information about how these windows are actually made. So each of these is a detail about what the frame looks like and how it's built and, and that sort of thing. We don't in any need, we don't have to make this look this accurate. We're looking for something approximate, but this cross section would certainly help you figure out what it really looks like. So if you were struggling with what the window would look like, you could use one of those as a cross section to kind of see. Um, this being the sill and what the sill looks like. Um, this being, that's in the jam. So we'd see one side and the other side of the jam. So we could use these as references if we wanted to. For our purposes right now, we don't really need to worry about them. We're just gonna make it up. Uh, but in the interest of showing you that these exist, you could certainly work from those as examples. So let's go ahead and build it out ourselves. So the first thing that I need to kind of carefully consider is the fact that there is no actual surface here yet. So if I'm going to start to make it a three-dimensional object, let's get organized on my layers first. You see that when we bring in the AutoCAD, it brings a bunch of garbage layers in with us. Um, layer zero here, let's rename this layer zero, and we'll call this Anderson uh, 3050 uh, casement. Perfect. Then I'll create a sublayer, and we can do a sublayer for, um, I don't know, let's, well, well, we'll hold off on the sublayer and we'll organize it later. I'll just call it construction and we'll make that active. So, so what I'm creating will end up on a layer and then we'll organize it a bit later. So first thing I need to do is create a surface. So I'll do a rectangular surface corner to corner. I'll start in that lower corner and I need this to be large enough to, let me turn on my midpoint. And while I'm here, I'll turn on my perpendicular. I need it to be large enough to cover my whole window. So about like that. Let me go ahead and change it into shaded mode so we can see the surface. There's our surface. And before I can really start to work with this, I need to kind of clean it up. So first off, I could take this outer shape. Sorry, wrong one that one, and I can use my trim command, edit and then trim, or I could type trim into the computer, and I could get rid of those two pieces that are outside. But what I'd really like is I'd like for this piece of glass, so to speak, or this surface to be broken up into several different pieces. So I can use a command called split. So it's under edit and then split, it's different than explode. It's edit split. It's going to ask me to select my object to split. I want to split this surface. So I'll hit enter. What am I going to cut it up with? I'm going to cut it up with this curve and this curve. And when I do that and hit enter, it's going to divide what was once three was what was once one surface into three separate little surfaces. So we can see those three surfaces there. Now I can use my extrude tools to actually make these three-dimensional. So let's start with the frame itself. So here's the frame of the window. I can go up to surface and then extrude surface. Uh, so excuse me, I have to go to solid and then extrude surface straight. So it's under solid, extrude surface straight. If you're typing it into the command line, it's extrude SRF on my, um, command line here, I want to look and make sure that it is set to solid, which it is. And I'm also going to check this box for delete input. Yes. And the reason that I'm doing that is because the original extrusion that I'm, or the original surface that I'm extruding from, I want to go ahead and delete that because I don't need it long term. So let's give this a depth of, I don't know, an inch and a half. So let's say 1.5 inches. And we'll hit enter. And there's my window. If you decided you didn't like an inch and a half, after the fact, you could do a scale 1D on it. So scale 1D. And I could say, you know what? That inch and a half, I really wanted that to be two inches. And it would bump that up to two inches. Alternatively, you could undo and then extrude again. So as we start to create this, let's take my plane that will ultimately be my glass, and I could move that up. Or I could leave my glass where it is and move this frame down doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and move it. I'll type V for vertical. 
and we'll go from the midpoint down to that point there. And so now I've got a little bit below and a little bit above. Let's look at the window itself, this piece, and let's extrude that. This would be the frame that goes all the way around the outside. Let's extrude SRF or extrude surface. Remember it's solid, extrude surface straight. And let's make that, again, it's a solid yes. We're deleting the input yes. And let's make this the thickness of our wall. So we'd say maybe, uh, let's see, if it's a two by six wall, we'd be at five and a half inches plus sheetrock plus exterior siding. So let's go six and a half inches. So I'll type 6.5 inches and then enter. And so that's then kind of my frame. Let's move that down. So let's go to move, V for vertical. And I'm actually gonna move this all the way down so that it's flush with the outside. So that's, you can kind of see what it looks like from the inside and there it is from the outside. It's looking pretty good. Next thing that I can do if I wanted to is I could actually divide up this pane into all of these little mullions. So we have those green lines that go around. I could do that if I wanted to. It may be something that you want to do and maybe something that you don't want to do. The alternative would be to leave it as a single sheet of glass, in which case I can extrude that to give it some thickness. Glass is always going to have some thickness too. So we'll type in extrude SRF again. And this time we're going to delete input, but we're going to go both sides. So it's going in both directions at once. And our distance now would be half of the thickness. So if we wanted it to be a half an inch thick, we'd be saying this is 0.25 inches. And that then is going to give us an inner and an outer piece of our glass. Like that. Now, if we did want the mullions after the fact, and this is something that um, if, we, if we wanted to divide it and treat it all separately, we could. Alternatively, we could also come back here and build out the mullions. And we can do this in a similar fashion to what we've already done. Let's go ahead and create a rectangular um, surface. Let's go right there. I'm using these as a little guide. There it is. And then let's take this surface and let's split it with all of these green lines. Now, one of the big challenges is if we do this split right now, we're going to end up with lots of little pieces. We'd really like the mullions to be just one solid piece. So maybe instead of splitting it initially, let's do some trimming work first. So let's go into trim. Oops, sorry. Let me hit escape so that nothing's like that. There we go, trim. I'm just gonna say all for my cutting objects. Oops. And then we'll clean up. Ah, I'm being difficult. Uh, let me select them this way. So I'm selecting all the green objects and then let's trim with those. And there we go. Oops, if you run into problems, you can always control Z to undo. You might wanna zoom in to make it a little bit easier to pick your lines. So the alternative would be not to trim it and then you're joining everything together. Oops, control Z.
Perfect. So I've trimmed all of those out. Go ahead and hit enter. Now, when I go to do the, um, the split, we'll select my surface and we'll go up to my um, edit and then split. And when it asks me to select, rather than click on every one of those green lines, I'm going to come over to my layer stack here. I'll right click on the green lines layer, which is right here. It's called A dash elevation. And I'm going to say select objects. It'll select all of those objects. And then I'm also going to click on that maroon object that goes around the outside right there. And then we'll go ahead and hit enter. And the advantage is that, yes, it created the panes of glass, but my mullions, oops, if I can select it, are all one surface. It lets me work with them much easier. So let's go ahead and delete, for clarity, all of these pieces of glass. Why you delete the, and them? They're not supposed to be glass. Well, I in this scenario, I've already created the glass. So if I, oops. So now you need to split it again. So I'm not going to split it because our glass can actually run through our mullions. So our mullions can be a solid object independent of our glass. Let me go ahead and turn the glass back on just so you can see it. So there's our glass. I'm going to switch out of shaded mode and into ghosted mode so we can kind of see. The mullions are kind of in the middle of the stack right there. So if I were to select the mullions, I could then extrude them. And again, we're doing both sides, and we're deleting our input. And I can choose how thick I want one of those to be. So my glass was a half inch thick. Let's, let's make this a little bit more. So let's do, I don't know, 3 eighths of an inch. But what is the benefit? Why couldn't you leave the, uh, the squares as a glass instead of- I could, or... except I had already created the glass. I could okay. absolutely do it. So th this is where it's actually, this is a good point. Let me back up for a second to where I have the glass back. And this is where there's no right or wrong way to model this. So rather than, and let me go ahead and make a copy of it for a second. Let's go back to shaded. Let's copy this over here. All right. If I didn't want to delete those pieces, I could come back in here and I could extrude every one of the individual panes of glass. So we'll select them all. And then we could extrude the surface. We're again going both directions. We're deleting the input. Uh, all of that looks good. This would be, uh, what did I say, 0.25 inches. And so there's the thicknesses of each pane of glass. Then we take the mullions and we'd extrude those. And in this case, let's do them at, uh, that's one inch is two more. Let's do them at a half inch. And there we'd have all the mullions. So there's nothing wrong with building it this way. The advantage of building it like this, where I delete these and have a pane of glass that runs through it, is I can choose after the fact not to have the mullions. I could turn the mullions off if I didn't like them from a design standpoint. So when I'm back here, let's extrude this out. And so we're doing the same thing. This is a half inch. So the, the mullions are the same. But when we turn the glass back on, because this glass goes all the way through, these mullions, I can turn them on or turn them off, and I'll still have a viable window. If I took them over here and I turn them off, my window would no longer be a complete window because I'd have individual panes. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. Thanks. So it's more versatile long term if I model them the first way. But it doesn't mean that it has to be done that way. So I'm getting the same result in the end, they're looking the same. So now that I've created this, I really should put a little bit of trim around the window because typically a window would have some exterior trim uh, around it. So let's go ahead and add some exterior trim. Let's take the, well, my curves are down here now. Uh, so let's go ahead and do some derivative geometry. This is always a good strategy. I'm gonna go up to my curve choose curve from objects, there it is. 
and we're going to duplicate an edge. And I'll duplicate this edge and this edge and this edge and this edge. I'll go ahead and hit enter and I'm going to join them together. So I'll go to edit and then join or type in join in the command line and hit enter. And then I'm going to offset it. So let's offset. First one, I'm going to do a distance of 0.25. It's going to give me a tiny little bit of a reveal against my frame there. And then I'll take that curve again and I'll offset it by the distance of my trim. So let's say I want a two by six trim here. My distance would be five and a half inches. And there I am. So I could take this curve and this curve and I could extrude those. So instead of extrude surface, we'd be extruding curve. There they are. We need to make sure that it's set to solid and our distance would be the thickness of a two by four or two by six, it would be one and a half. And now we have a piece of trim going around our window. And you can kind of see how it's all coming together. Let me go ahead and rotate this so it's standing up in position here. I'll take this, we'll do a rotate 3D. And let's do it along this front edge. There, we'll go straight up. And we're going to rotate that so it's pointing up in the Z axis like that. And now we're starting to see what that window would look like. I'm going to go ahead and delete this other window. I don't need it right now. And we'll keep working on this window. Now, I could add some finer levels of detail. So I could, for example, chamfer the corner of this. So remember, we did this before. I could go in and do my chamfer surface. And I could set my distances to be, um, I don't know, let's do 0.125. That's an eighth. And then I could. Uh, that's good. And I could do this to that, and I could build in a little chamfer. Now, remember last time, we, it worked a lot better when we had our surfaces divided up. So if you were going to do this, it would be a good opportunity to do some splits. And if I were doing it, I would draw a diagonal in each corner. I'd go from here to there. here to there, oops. There, to there, and there, to there. And then I would take this surface here, let's explode it. And then let's take this and split it with each of those diagonals. thereby making it into four separate surfaces that surround my window. And that's gonna make the chamfer significantly better. So I could do a chamfer surface now. I said it was an eighth, so I could chamfer that to that. It makes it nice and clean. I could chamfer this and that. There it is. Come over here and we could chamfer this this and then I could chamfer this to this. So there's always ways to do this, right? And we could add more and more levels of detail. If we wanted our little mullions to have a little bit of a chamfer or a flute or something, we could do that uh, as well. So there's, there's always options to making more and more detail. And that's going to be dependent on how comfortable you are in building this and creating it. So we have set this up uh, and we've worked to kind of get our basic geometry together. It's now time to organize it and start to add our materials because we're now dealing with materials and texture mapping and we want everything to look good. So let's go ahead and start to divide this up. So I have my Anderson windows. Let's do a sub layer for trim. I'm going to do a sub layer for jam. I'm going to do a sublayer for frame. And I'm going to do a sublayer for glass. 
So the glass is probably the easiest. We just pick the glass and then we right click on the glass layer and say change object layer and it's now on the glass layer. Sometimes it's easier to actually turn it off. Oh, I should do a layer for uh, millions. Oops, that was millions. Okay, so let's take the mullions and let's put them on the mullions later. Change object layer. So the more organized we are, the easier it is to decide what it is we're doing. Let's take the trim and put it on the trim layer. And I'm turning the layers off as a way of easily identifying that, yes, I have them selected. So let's put that on the jam layer, change object layer. We'll turn that off. And now we're left with just the frame. Oops, looks like I had a few pieces that didn't get deleted there. So let's clean those up. And we'll delete those. And then we'll select all of the, um, the remaining pieces. Now, I should turn off everything else. These are all the leftover AutoCAD layers because we don't need any of those. Perfect. And that leaves us with just the window frame. We'll select that window frame. Uh, I'm getting a question. What do I press to orbit around a specific object? Well, I'm right clicking to orbit. But if I want to orbit around a particular object, what I'll do is I'll select the object and then I'll type Z for zoom followed by S for selected and it will reorient my view around that particular object. So let's go ahead and change what's left of the frame to put it on the frame layer. Change object layer. And there we are. So all of my components are now on their own individual layers. It's time to start thinking about materials for these. So let's open, uh, let's set V-Ray as my, my current render. So let's go to render, current render, V-Ray for Rhino. There we go. And then let's open our V-Ray asset editor. And I'm going to go open the drawer to the left to look for materials. I'll start with glass. And in glass, I'm going to use, let's do the tempered because we can see it a little bit. And I'm going to right click on it and say add to scene. And then instead of assigning it to the objects, I'm going to right click and assign it to the layer that is the glass layer. So there it is, glass. So I have glass assigned to the glass layer. Let's look at my, um, my frame. And so maybe we want that to be in metal. So it could be like an anodized bronze if we wanted it to be. It also could be something that's white. So we could use uh, like a plastic and choose a white or a black or a gray. So here's a, a white plastic. We can do it in that. So it just depends on the look that you're going for. I'm going to stick with the metal. I'm going to do the anodized dark gray here. We'll right click and we'll add to the scene. And then we'll select the name, right click and say apply to layer. And that's going to go on the frame. And there it is. My jam might be wood. So I might come down here to my wood and laminates and I might choose a, let's go into a veneer like this. I'll add it to the scene. And then I'm gonna go ahead and right click on it and say apply to layer and we'll add it to my jam. And I'm going to use that same material for my uh, let's use it for the mullions. And let's also use it for the trim. Uh, well, actually, you know what? My mullion should probably be the uh, aluminum anodized. So let's right click and go to apply to layer. And let's go back to my mullions there. There we go. So if I wanted to take a preview of this, we could go ahead and click on it and go to rendered mode. And we could take a look at how it looks. Like that, not bad, right? My frame looks pretty good. My glass looks pretty good. Where we're having some issues is the parts that are wood. And so this is where texture mapping is gonna come in. So if we're looking at the frame right now, it's all one big frame. 
Well, in reality, we should break that apart because this would never be built as one continuous frame. So we need to use our split to make some changes. So I'm going to go ahead and use my um, surface from three or four corner points. And I'm going to build, and this is so that I can do it for everything at once. Let's switch this into a ghosted mode so we can see it there. And I'm going to build a surface that's a diagonal. So on the, on the window frame, I just did lines. On this, I'm going to do a full surface. And this is going to allow me to split this into better Okay, so that's there. Now on a window frame, and I wouldn't expect you to know this, typically the legs of the window will extend past where the sill is. So we would use in this scenario, a vertical plane. And we'd come down to there. I'm gonna right click to repeat the vertical plane. And we come down to right there. I can then use those objects there that I just created to split this one larger object. So let's select the larger object. I'll type split or go to edit and then split. And my cutting objects will be this and that, that, and that. And if I did it correctly, when I hit enter, I'll have four separate pieces like that. So now I can texture map each of these pieces differently. So let's go ahead and look back in my rendered view where we're seeing it. And I need to apply texture mapping to this. So let's go over into my properties. And this is review of what we did last class. I'm going to go over into my texture mapping right here. This is most similar to a box. So we'll click on the box mapping. We'll do a bounding box. We'll use our world coordinates. And we will cap it, yes. Okay, then we need to make sure that the grain is going in the correct direction. So rather than having it go in the vertical direction, it needs to go in the horizontal direction. And so we can do that by showing that mapping widget like we did before. And then we'll rotate that. So I'll use my uh, gumball here. We'll rotate that so that the grain is going in the right direction. Our scale isn't quite right. So I'm going to come down here and do the x equals y equals z to kind of equalize that grain. Now when we look at it, yeah, it looks pretty close to what the wood would look like. The scale looks pretty good, etc. So let's go ahead and select it and then hide the mapping widget. And now we have one piece that's fairly accurate. These verticals aren't right, but they're close to this one. So we could select each of the verticals here and select them both. And then we could do our match mapping and we can match it to what's down here. Now in that case, they'd be seamless. So we still need to make a rotation so that it's going vertical. So we go back to our show mapping widget. There it is. And we rotate this again, hold down shift and you can see it change. And now we can hide the mapping and our grain is going the correct direction for the verticals. When we come up to the top, we wanna to change the direction so that this is going along that direction. It's like the bottom, so all we have to do is do match mapping. We'll match it to the bottom, and now it looks reasonable. Now, this one's a little challenging because it's on an arc, so it would always be slightly curved, but this is a reasonable approximation of what we're after, okay? We still have a little bit of wood that is these pieces. I did not break them up the same way. So I'm going to uh, kind of approximate them using the match mapping and hope that it gets a little bit better. That's at least going in the vertical direction on the sides. It wouldn't hurt to change the top and the bottom, but we'll go with it for right now. So it's not quite perfect, but you get where I'm coming from with this. The other alternative would be to change this to be like a painted as if it were painted on the inside. So we could go back to our paint, wall paint and wallpaper. And there's our white fine grain. Let's add to the scene. 
and then let's right click and let's apply to layer. And this is going to be the jam. And now we have it as if it were kind of a white paint instead. So just a different strategy. Okay. So once we have this set up, it's now time to do a test rendering of it. So we see we're pulling a lot of things together. We have to generate the object on our own, but then we have to do all the texture mapping and the, and, and the environment and everything to get it ready to render. So let's go back into shaded mode and let's get this thing set up for rendering. So we need a layer. I'll go back to my layers. I need a layer for environment. Oh, not a sub layer. Let me undo that. Actually, I'll just take the default and rename it to be environment. And then we could do a sublayer for our infinite plane. And we can do a sublayer for our basic directional light. And then we could create our infinite plane and our light. Now, that's certainly one way, and there's nothing wrong with that. But our alternative to this would be that we can use one of the presets that I've given you. So if we scroll down here to the bottom here, I have some test renderings, white background, and the test rendering with the sky. The test rendering with the sky is probably going to look even better. So let's go ahead and download that one. Let's save link as. That's fine. You can go here for right now. And there, here's our problem. Chrome does this to us. So we have to make sure that we click that little arrow and choose keep. Now we can download that file. Let's go ahead and open it. Perfect. And so the advantage here is that I already have everything set up for your rendering. So since I have everything set up for the rendering, we can bring that file that we just created here in as a block reference. So let's go ahead and clean up the layers. We don't need the environment layer after all. So let's delete it and its sub layers. And let's take all the rest of these objects and these layers, and let's delete them. Say yes to all. Uh, sometimes AutoCAD does this, um, where it has hidden block references. So if we go to the block manager, these are all AutoCAD leftovers. So we could take them all, and then we could delete them. How oh, nice. It's probably gonna make me stuck here. But I didn't I didn't save my work before, so I have to get through it. All right, and it also has hidden block reference. Anyway, we'll just leave it for right now, it's fine. Let me save this. I'll go to file and then save. And I wanna put it into my folder for today. Go into 208. And let's save this as our casement window 3050. And I'll click save. Okay, so now I can take this piece that I just created and I can drop it into this scene. So let's go to edit, blocks, insert block instance. And we will browse for that file that I just saved. So we'll go into my folder for today. There it is. We'll go ahead and say open. We're going to link it and we're gonna have a layer style as a reference. We'll say, okay. 
and then we'll drop it in to our scene. There it is. It'll probably need to be moved up a bit. So we can go into move V for vertical. And we'll move it up so it's above the ground plane. And then we can set up a nice little view to render it from. And we can go ahead and click on the render icon. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll click on render. And it'll open the frame buffer. And we should get our material correctly texture mapped. We should get our window. And we should be able to see through our glass. When this is done, this is what you'll save. So you click on the little disk icon. And we want to make sure that, of course, it's not going in its correct folder, that when we save it, we're going to save it as a JPEG file right there. So you'll go ahead and save it, and that's what you'll turn in. Uh, I do make mention, I think, in the handout, I need to change it to zipping your files and turning in a zip. You don't need to. Just give me a render uh, and then save your file. Now, the nice thing, remember, is we can make edits to this after the fact. So we can jump back to our original. And we can say, you know what? I want the window to be open. So let's select the frame. So I'll right click and say, select objects. There's the frame. Let's select the glass, right click, select objects. Let's select the mullions, right click, select objects. And then let's open that window. Let's go to rotate 3D. Oops, I can't type today. There we go. And our rotation is going to be the object itself. So let's come in here and let's select that outer corner of the object there. And we'll go up straight vertical to the upper point right there. Our reference is then going to be the window. And then we can open up that window. And once I have that window open, remember, I can come back and save it, file, save. I can jump back to this file. I can go to edit, blocks, block manager. Linked file is newer. We can go ahead and update it. And now it's showing as open. Don't be worried about the little lines that came along with it. Those lines will disappear in a rendering. So if I go back and re-render, I'll click the little teapot icon we'll see the window is open and all of those lines have disappeared. Okay, so you can pick any type of window you want, any type of door you want. This is generally what we're going for in terms of how we're building it. Uh, remember, it's designed to be completed in two hours, so you can add layers of detail until you reach the time where it's time to render it. I do want you to pay attention to texture mapping and how your materials are applied to the object. That's something that's important going forward. But this is designed for you to figure out your own way to build it. So yes, I just demonstrated it. This is how I would go about doing it. But doesn't mean you need to build it the same way that I did. OK, we do have our check-ins this week. So we'll have our first check-in group at uh, about 12.15 or so. If uh, you do have to come to one of the sessions this week, um, it will also be about solving problems. I know I got a, a series of emails over the weekend where people were having trouble with exercises. We'll get to all of you and try to give you that, that individualized help that you need to get moving, okay? If there are no other questions, I will let you all um, go and uh, have a good couple of days and I'll see you on Wednesday.